Let's take a look at the process of solving some basic trigonometric equations, like secant of theta equals negative 4. One approach we might take to this equation is to recognize that if I apply an inverse trigonometric function, secant inverse, to both sides, it cancels out, and we can use the inverse function to cancel out secant on the left-hand side, and so this becomes theta equals secant inverse of negative 4. And, and this is one of the sort of powerful things about inverse functions. They can help us undo the original function. Now secant is related to cosine. Secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And so the angle theta that we're looking for is equal to inverse cosine of the reciprocal ratio of negative 1 fourth because it's the ratios that belong inside the inverse function. Now, it'll become clear in a moment if it's not already, negative one-fourth is not a ratio that's related to a nice point on the unit circle. So our value for theta isn't going to be a nice angle like 30 or 45 degrees or, or anything quite like that. Uh, but because I've translated it into uh, a, a function that I have on my calculator, inverse cosine, uh, is a function here on the calculator, I can use that second inverse cosine of negative 1 divided by 4 to find an angle measure. So let me check for a moment, am I in degrees or, or radians? Let me uh, find an answer that's in terms of degrees. We could equally well find an answer that's in terms of radians. In degrees, I get 104. So one solution to this equation is the angle theta equal to 104, uh, roughly 104.5 degrees. Now, one of the things I want to mention here is that this is not the only solution. If you think about this solution on the unit circle, it's related to a secant ratio of negative 4 or a cosine ratio of 1 fourth, and, and so 104.5 degrees, it's going to be a bit bigger than 90 degrees, so it'll be about you know, over here somewhere. And it's the point on the unit circle that corresponds to an x-coordinate of negative one-fourth. Because it relates to that sort of cosine ratio, because it relates to a secant ratio, because it relates to that x-coordinate, there'll be other solutions in a, in a few different places. So one other solution would be across the circle, um, across the x-axis, I would get the similar x-coordinate of one-fourth, and so we can think about that second solution in a couple ways, maybe the easiest way to, to see it. This would be a negative angle, sorry, this would be a negative angle here of uh, negative 104.5 degrees, and so that would represent a, a second solution. But in fact, there are an infinite number of solutions, because I could also, I could always add or take away a full rotation. So another solution would be 360 plus 104 degrees or 360 plus negative 104 degrees. So we really have sort of two sets of solutions. On the one hand, I could think of uh, a set of solutions. Theta could be anything that looks like 104 degrees plus 360 degrees times K where k represents any sort of arbitrary integer, or we could have negative 104 degrees, uh, 104.5 degrees plus 360 degrees times k. So these sets of values would represent all of the possible solutions, and, and again, I mean you know, where k is any integer. Often, will be interested in finding solutions that are between 0 and 360 or between 0 and 2 pi for an equation like this. So we'll be looking for solutions on sort of one full set of angles around the unit circle. And so in that case, you know, we have our one solution uh, that came from the inverse trig function, inverse cosine, gave us that one solution. So one solution would be theta equals 104.5 degrees. And then, of course, the second solution, the way I, I thought about it here, there's kind of a symmetric solution because of the symmetry of the unit circle. 
for cosine and secant, that symmetry relates to a reflection across the x-axis because that keeps the x-coordinate the same. And so looking from above the x-axis to below the x-axis, we get that second solution. Of course, if I want to find a solution between 0 and 360, negative 104.5 isn't going to work so well, but I can take that away from 360. Uh, or another way to think about it, I could add 360 to that solution, and so we would end up with 255.5 degrees. So given the parameters of looking for solutions between 0 and 360, the two solutions that satisfy that are 104.5 degrees and 255.5 degrees. It's nice to have ways to check our work, and, and we can uh, do that. So we translated this into a, a problem involving cosine, um, and because cosine is a function in our calculator, I can take cosine of 104.5, and because of rounding, it's not going to be exactly one-fourth, but it's pretty close to negative one-fourth. And we can see that cosine of 255.5 that other point on the unit circle also gives us that same cosine ratio. So let's take a look at a couple other sort of generic examples to see how a similar uh, process would work for sine and, and tangent. And I should mention, you know, this process that we're going to look at, it, it would also work for cosecant. Uh, the process for sine is related to cosecant and the process for tangent is related to cotangent. So if I have an equation sine of theta equals y, the solution is going to correspond to some y value on the unit circle. So, so the y value here, of course, it has to be between 1 and negative 1 in order for it to be a sine ratio. And so there's going to be some point on the unit circle that corresponds to that, and so there'll be some angle. And using the calculator, we know that you know, the calculator would give us uh, inverse sine would give us some ratio between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees, or between negative pi over 2 and pi over 2. So, so I know that the solution that would come out of inverse sine would have to be over here. It would have to be in either quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. For sine, there'll be a second solution at that same height. Right, and so we'll get a solution between negative 90 degrees and 90 degrees, and the second solution would then be at the same height. So if it was in quadrant 1, I would want to look for a second solution in quadrant 2. And if the first solution was in quadrant 4, I would want to look for a second solution in quadrant 3, where the y value is the same. For tangent and cotangent, the ratio here can actually be any number. It could be um, from negative infinity to infinity because tangent and cotangent can have values of anything. Thinking about what this would look like on the unit circle, similar to sine and cosecant, what we could get out of the calculator, and I should mention that if we had a, an equation like cotangent of theta um, equals some ratio, uh, we could translate between a cotangent ratio and a tangent ratio by taking the reciprocal. So in, in the calculator, we only have tangent to work with. Um, so I could plug in a, a tangent ratio. Um, if I wanted to find when cotangent equals some value, I'd have to use the reciprocal there. So with that in mind, um, we, we can only get tangent values out of the calculator, inverse tangent values out of the calculator, and those would give us angles, just like with sine, those give us angles between negative 90 and 90 degrees, uh, or negative pi over 2 and pi over 2 radians. But for tangent, the, the value, you know, if, if it, we have a, some tangent expression that relates to an angle, let's we have a tangent expression that relates to this angle down here in quadrant 4. Quadrant 4 is a place where tangent values are negative because the x values are positive and the y values are negative. Of course, tangent is x, uh, sorry, y over x. Um, and so in quadrant 4, the, those values are negative because x and y have a different sign. In quadrant 2, 
is where, you know, exactly across the circle is where we would get that other solution. So looking at these two different situations, for sine, it turns out that if theta is a solution, we could get that other symmetric solution by taking 180 degrees minus theta. That's going to move us from quadrant 1 or 4 and take us to an angle in quadrant either 2 or 3. For tangent, if theta is a solution, the other solution is going to come from taking 180 degrees plus theta. And that will move us, if we were in quadrant 4, that would take us over to quadrant 2. And if we were in quadrant 1, that would take us over to quadrant, quadrant 3. So let me end the video with a couple of questions. I encourage you to take a few minutes and try to solve these equations, uh, looking for solutions between 0 and 360 degrees. We have sine of theta equals 1 fifth, and sine of theta equals negative 4 over 7. Cotangent of theta equals negative 2.4, and cotangent of theta equals positive 10. I'll post some answers to these in a separate video, but I encourage you to take a few minutes to work on them before you look at the solutions. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.